I want to welcome everyone. I'm Anna Medill, the president of SEMPDX, to our first virtual monthly speaker series event with Jenna Cooper. We're very excited to be hosting you. Thank you for joining us. Of course. And as we get started, so this is being recorded. So anyone who is listening as a participant, if you can go ahead and mute your microphone, that will just eliminate background noise for uh, both the recording, but also for other attendees. And if we don't see you muted, we may go ahead and just mute uh, you for, for yourself, but. And I have control. Be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll go ahead and introduce Jenna. So. Jenna Cooper, APR, is the owner and founder of C3 Collective and Speak You, and will be presenting today on how to rock your next video call or virtual meeting. Very timely. Yes, a lot of people. Well, welcome everybody. I'm just going to go ahead and get started. I know we uh, there was a different link up and hopefully people have found their way to the new one. I'll just briefly go over a little bit of my, my background. I like to say I'm a recovering television news anchor and reporter. And I worked in different markets across the country, started in Portland, went to Bend, Boise, Austin, Texas, Oakland Horns, and then Atlanta, which is the lower right-hand corner, and also um, ended up at Mount St. Helens, covering Mount St. Helens in 2004 when she was burping, which she was doing behind me. Great story. Yeah, it was a good way to, to end my career. Then I moved into PR. I went to CMD agency, if we have any CMDers on the call and then was uh, brought over to Northwest Natural. And so I've been a public information officer and spokesperson for Dove Lewis, um, PSU School of Business and also Northwest Natural. And I've owned my company for about eight years. Presenting is something that I just absolutely love to do, but I also love to work with our clients on. So I'll give you kind of a, an idea of where we're heading today. Our journey, we'll talk about preparation, preparing to do a video conference call platforms and technology. We have so many, <laughs> there's a new one every day. It seems like visual and audio considerations. This is a big one. Body language is really, really important, especially now when we're doing these, these interactive calls without being interactive. <laughs> and then also your energy level, very important. Preparation is very important. Uh, that's why I kind of put it at the beginning. A lot of times, people say, oh yeah, I put everything together or I, I practiced and it turns out they didn't or they practiced in the shower. So don't do that. Give yourself a little bit of time. Prepare the slides. Take a look at your slide deck uh, with the technology you'll be using. Make sure you have the right, um, the right size slides. Make sure that the, the fonts are even and the same. Just make sure that it's, it's a nice preparation or a nice uh, presentation. A pre-meeting or a session, and I just did one with Anna and her team, um, usually we send out something like a questionnaire before we coach people. And it's like, you know, what are your biggest concerns? Do you love giving presentations? Do you hate it? You know, what are the things that happen physically to you uh, before you give a presentation? That's what we do. But for your sake, if you're maybe rolling out a campaign or a product or something, Email, even if it's an internal team, email and just be like, hey, how much do you know about this? What can we, uh, what can we solve on this call? Making it more efficient, making your meetings move a little bit faster. And then you can also put in more uh, verbiage and um, images that can help kind of tell your story. Technology, we have so many choices, so many choices. And of course that's growing every single day, as we said. Choose that platform, okay. Today we're on Zoom. And uh, obviously there are, there were some challenges with Zoom, um, people Zoom bombing. <laughs> I, think the, I think that's been mitigated because they added the platform. But there's Skype for Business, Microsoft uh, Teams, GoToMeetings, Google Hangouts, FaceTime at all. I mean, there's so many different platforms. There's, um, there's one that I am just looking into called Soapbox and it's a way to record yourself with your PowerPoint and you can afterwards go in and either have full cam camera shot or go back to your presentation. So you can edit it afterwards. I think that's kind of a cool feature. Video is also important. You wanna choose your device carefully. I am talking to you on, what is it? The C290, it's the one that's down there. The C290, these are back ordered by the way. <laughs> if you don't have one then, ooh. 
Um, although I heard like some little mom and pop shop up in Vancouver might have a few um, that aren't this exact brand, but, but if you can have something that has a microphone that has HD, I can't remember how much this was, probably like a hundred, no more than $200, but definitely worth it because your camera on your laptop, a lot of times it's not the best quality and it just, it looks more grainy and it doesn't focus itself. This is HD and you can also, you know, it's, it's lit up and you can adjust it and things like that. So I highly recommend one of those. You can also, you know, use your uh, tablet or your smartphone. A lot of people use that. Just make sure your smartphone, just make sure it's hooked onto something. <laughs> so I don't know how many of you have been on a call and you're like, whoa, it's like a roller coaster. Try and avoid that. That's really not helpful for anybody. Audio, audio is something that people don't, I think, give as much thought to. You can use your laptop. You can also use an external. I'm gonna show you what I'm using right now. Hopefully you can see it. This I got years ago. I did some voiceover work and I just got it from B&H Photo. There are other options as well. You can use a headset like this. You can use AirPods. I don't have those, but um, I know other people who do and swear by them. Um, this is something, this is a lav mic. And if you find one, if you find one, make sure that it's compatible with your computer. This is the one I got and it is not. <laughs> this is something that works with your phone. It works really well, but it's not, it's not something that works um, with your computer. So I'm just going to put this here. It's not on, but you want to do this. Make sure, I guess this side, you want to make sure that this is about the space between your mouth and your microphone, just so that the audio uh, is very clear and it's not down further you also want to make sure you're not wearing a lot of jewelry because that can get very loud when people turn. <laughs> so all kinds of things to consider and, and practice it to make sure that it is actually, you know, it's coming across well. Lighting is very important. I was, we were just talking before the call just about how it's spring and I'm in my living room now and I've got all these windows and I'm facing south. And so sometimes the sun comes in and it's just like, glaring and it's huge and everything's lit up and then like five seconds later right wait five seconds and it'll change <laughs> the clouds come over and it's dark and so i have to kind of adjust i have one two three four five lights right now one of them is a diva light like this i have a very uh cost effective version i would probably <laughs> upgrade if i were you sometimes the um they're just kind of rickety and i would show you or else but i would you know, it would fall and that would be embarrassing for everyone. So <laughs> make sure that you are well lit with a diva light. You can also, you can do some different, different colors. So this is a blue light. Ooh, not great. Here's more of a whiter light. You can make it uh, darker or lighter. Uh, and this can offset the kind of the up and downs of the lighting if the, if the, uh, weather is not cooperating, which it never does. So, and that's kind of a warmer light, which is the one I choose to use. All right. This is what I call the witness protection shot. We see this a lot where people have the light behind them and they just, they don't even see that they're, you know, completely backlit their profile. You also don't want to have a, an interrogation shot, which I realized I just did here. So this is really bright. See, I'm like, okay, where were you the night of July 3rd? You don't want that. <laughs> you want it to be kind of toned down a little bit and just kind of, you know, not, it, you want to be accentuated, but you don't want to blow your, blow your face out of the water there. It doesn't look good. Test, test, and then test again. Check all the, the elements before you go live for sure. Uh, even with a regular presentation, if you're doing it in person, you want to have, uh, you know, check that a week ahead of time, the day before, uh, the day of beforehand, which is good that we did that. Anna, we did that before the call and it was really helpful. So just make sure, I mean, it's, you might as well, right? Because how many things can go wrong? Have a backup plan. So of course, with a lot of these platforms, you have a call-in number. Uh, you just want to make sure that your audience has that. And because uh, a lot of times different technologies just kind of don't work on certain platforms. And so you just want to make sure that you're um, you have that backup plan. It's like event planning, plan A, B, C, and then D. <laughs> D normally happens. We talked a little bit about practice. Practice is very important. And I say practice makes peace. 
the last thing you want to think about is technology when you're doing a presentation because you're just distracted and you can't focus because you're like, oh my God, I hope the video is going to run. Oh, you know, so you just put it on a little tripod, a selfie stick, your, your smartphone um, or your Logitech. You can put it on a windowsill and practice, 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 practice. I promise you, you'll see things you did not know you were doing. <laughs> There's all kinds of things people do with their hands or their eyes or their movement. So definitely practice and make sure that you are addressing those things well ahead of time and also that your audio works and video and all that. Easy, easy thing to do. Okay, so <laughs> this guy, let's just say, so this is from Zoom, but this is his background. Let's call him Fred. What if you were Fred's boss? Be like, ugh, it's kind of a mess. Fred's kind of a mess. There's a lot going on back there. You just want to make sure that there's kind of a clean background and not that it's not very cluttered. It's just really distracting and that takes the focus off you. You also want to make sure there's no proprietary information. Maybe your kids are in the background uh, or a picture of your children, sometimes your actual children. And you just want to make sure that that's kind of clean and, and more professional. So he switched. And I know we had a couple of these on the call, so we assume that Fred works at NASA maybe. This is good. I, I'd say be careful though, and again, practice, because Anna, can you put your arm up? Can you show us? I'm gonna pull you in here. So you, there goes Anna's arm. Woo, yeah. So that is uh, Kauai. It's a lovely background. I'm sure we all wish we were there, but you have to make sure and test the different colors. When I was in news, we had a green screen for for the weather casters, for the meteorologists, and then sometimes we would do our little intros and our tags there. And you had to make sure we actually had a second set of clothes or jacket at the station so that you would get in front of the screen and make sure that you weren't a floating head or, you know, <laughs> floating arms, disembodied arms. So just check that before you go. I'm gonna pause here and just take a look at the, this is a lot of people, and this isn't you by the way, but kind of going through some of the different angles and some of the different backgrounds. Um, there's some that just aren't as flattering as others. I'm not sure what Mitchell's doing over there. Mitchell's like, I don't know where his camera is. <laughs> but this is, these are just, it shows how different angles can make a different impression. John, it's kind of looking up. You can tell it's a laptop camera up there, the second in from the right. Jeff, Right next to him on the right is like, you know, falling out of the screen. Have you ever had that where you're talking to someone, you're like, hello, <laughs> uh, they start sinking. So you want to make sure that you are, you know, your camera set up, you look at it ahead of time. Just flip on, uh, if you have a Mac, flip on FaceTime and or whatever, just turn on your camera and just make sure that your, your framing is good because it can, it can really make or break your presentation. Here's an example of something this is really good framing and having your shoulders in the frame and having your arms a little bit is good. That's about the type of uh, headroom. That's pretty much maximum headroom that you want. A lot of headroom is a big, is a big deal. Again, that takes away from you. You're the presenter. You want to keep the highlight on yourself. Angle of the camera is super important. There are just shots that you just don't want to see. It's really hard to pull off a good shot when the camera is looking straight up your nose. Maybe some people can do it. I am not one of those people. It's just not the most flattering shot. So make sure that your camera is either eye level or a little bit above. That's why people, when they take selfies, they do this. So it's this way, right on your eyes or a little bit above. Not too high like the guy on that other screen or on that other slide, but um, have it go down and that looks more flattering. Posture is really, really important. It's hard too because we're sitting at our desks. I mean, one of my clients is like, I just got off, I swear to God, like 14 hours of Zoom calls. <laughs> You're just sitting there and by sitting, your posture just kind of automatically crunches down. You know, you're just losing your enthusiasm, losing your air, losing your energy. You do want to practice good posture. This is something that's just really simple. If you're standing up and you're standing tall, do that for if everyone's on the call. So, okay, Sue Hughes, I see you down there. I'm gonna call you out. Hello. <laughs> if you wanna kind of sit, sit, up, sit up straight like that, and no, nope, no leaning, go back. 
<laughs> Pretend there's a, a string on the top of your head and it's pulling you up. Uh, that brings your posture up. It makes you look more confident. It also opens up your rib cage. It helps you with breathing. It helps with anxiety. It just helps all around. So super helpful. Sorry, Sue. Forgive. I'm sorry. You did great. <laughs> also, a little shout out to Foley, a local, local producer of uh, furniture and a friend is the president over there. But this is a great table. Uh, I am on my old kitchen nook table and I have a, my daughter's old chair <laughs> underneath my laptop to lift yourself up. So you wanna, you know, again, with the camera angle, you wanna put your laptop up higher. You also wanna stand if you can. Again, helps with energy. It, it just um, helps keep you going, keeps you motivated in a, you know, in a great way, easy way. Energy is very important. Uh, I mean, it's hard because when you are sitting down like that and you're just kind of watching, you kind of get overload, right? Webinar overload. This is what I had to look out for years and talk to as if it was a person <laughs> and it's not. And so you really wanna try and connect with this hunk of glass and plastic and metal. When I first started out, I worked with an anchor who really had trouble with that. And she was just like, I don't know what to do. Like, I can't connect. It's just talking to this camera. And she would just kind of go, she was reading, but she was kind of like this, you know, kind of deadpan. So she put a picture of her grandmother on the bottom. Little picture, grandma. And then she would look at the teleprompter and she would talk like she was talking to her grandmother. It was great. It's easy to have these little, you know, tips and tricks, but if you really think about the camera, instead of just a camera as a giant energy sucking device, I swear. That's why when you're a reporter or an anchor, you have to be like above and beyond. People are so distracted these days. People need you to have energy to keep them engaged. So practice that and watch it back. You'll see, it's like, it's weird. It takes your energy. Focus is always important. Uh, I personally was diagnosed with ADD two years ago. It's made a big difference. First, I was like, no, that's, there's no way. And I'm like, oh yeah, completely forgot to go to law school, for example. But everybody is so distracted these days. So you wanna make sure when you're on a call, when you're hosting a call, put your mobile device, you know, take the buzz off, um, put it in airplane mode if you can, Turn off your inbox notifications. Those can be distracting, but also embarrassing if they float onto your screen. So just make sure that you don't have any distractions. This guy is incredibly distracted. Remember also your camera, it, there was a saying in news where every mic is a hot mic. Every camera is a hot camera. Think about reality TV shows and they forget the cameras there. It's really easy to do and I'm sure you've all seen all those zoom fails or video conference call fails some are really embarrassing <laughs> they're kind of funny for us but mortifying for the person I would assume just remember your microphone or your microphone and your camera really are both on just be cognizant of that and close your computer all the way if you're using your laptop when you're done just to make sure it's off it can catch strange things we do have a checklist I can share with anyone who's interested. I'm um, going through this checklist, one, two, three, four, five, you know, making sure that everything's set up ahead of time so that you do feel confident when you start is also really helpful. Um, it seems maybe a little remedial, but again, I'm ADD, so I need my lists <laughs> to make sure that I'm actually hitting the mark. Um, so we can, if you wanna email me or go to speakyou.net um, and sign up for our newsletter, we can certainly do that. Okay, so speak you. My again, my main company is C3 Collective. We do public relations, media relations, crisis has, uh, I don't know what the cone is. I don't, that's a typo. Uh, crisis communications, uh, speaker and presentation training, media training. We've been doing a lot of media training these days and um, on camera like at, at people's homes because a lot of our clients are doing calls, interviews, but they, um, they're not prepared. And so, <laughs> so that is our presentation. I hope that you guys are still there. <laughs> that was an interesting moment. Okay, so I think that's it. So thank you so much for tuning in and, and uh, rolling with the punches there. But yeah, I am open for questions. <laughs> oh. Yeah, and if you want to, yeah, great job. Thank you so much, Jenna. Yeah. Uh, for, for everyone online, so we don't all unmute at the same time, if you want to just go ahead and type in your question to Jenna in chat, and then she can read it off and 
answer it for you. Where is the chat function? <laughs> Bottom middle of your. Uh, oh yeah, I got it. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's Unger. He's a friend of mine. So I'm gonna do this because my chat box went away. I'm not sure what happened there. I would also like to hear some examples and some ideas from people about different um, about different platforms that they've used. Again, I mentioned Soapbox. I swear every time we um, every time I open up my all my e newsletters in the morning, I find a new one. I know there's WebEx. Um, Anna, what are some of the ones that you guys use or you've heard of? We primarily use Zoom for recording, but you know, have used GoToMeeting in the past, but we actually really prefer both the recording and just all the functionality on Zoom. Yeah. Do you ever get Zoom bombed? Just curious, just timely question. <laughs> we haven't. Uh, I think that's the the feature of, of locking the meeting once you and then having to let them in one by one is, is a good feature, but mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it is really interesting just because it's, um, you know, the security is obviously a big thing. There's, um, as we found out today, uh, but there's also just being able to function while you're in, like when it's live, sometimes the controls can get kind of funky. So you do, again, going back to practicing, you wanna make sure that you're, um, that you're really aware of how, like all those controls ahead of time. Practice, practice, practice. There's a new uh, a new setup I, that my friends and I are going to be using this weekend for a for a buddy chat called Whereby. Hmm. And there's no no platform that's needed. It all runs in browser. Um, so we're we're looking forward to testing that out this weekend. Oh, nice. Let me know how it is. We'll do. Okay. So I am seeing some questions here in group chat. Um, are you using a blue Yeti mic? I am not. This is. Oh God, do I even know? I mean, it's it's probably like an older version because I was using this for voiceovers, voiceover work. And um, I don't know, it, it, that was hmm, five years ago. So I don't think it's necessary to have something that this was like more expensive early adopter kind of thing. So, uh, but yeah, Yeti mics I've heard are very popular. Also when it comes to headsets, I've been checking out different headsets. Again, make sure, because I got one that I put away, thank goodness, but I got one that actually is not compatible with my Mac. It is it is with a, uh, like on a stage, but uh, not on my Mac. So that was a bad buy. Um, let's see, uh, learned about Soapbox by Wistia, yep, yep. You really like it, yeah. I wish it was, I don't think it's live. That was a question from Martha Corey um, that she learned about Soapbox um, at a lunch fest or search fest. Um, let's see if I have any of the newer digital cameras, especially Canon, now allow you to use it as a webcam for much better quality for sure. Yeah, the DLSRs are great. Uh, Mike Rosenberg. What about using a smartphone as your camera? Yes, depends probably on the quality of your smartphone. Uh, you know, the older versions, it, it, you know, they keep getting better every five minutes, of course, but that kind of goes back to practice. If you have a, a newer one, I would say yes, but just make sure, you know, obviously to have it horizontally. Um, the newer ones are better at that, but the older ones, I've had a couple clients do it this way versus this way, and they're, that's how their interviews came across. Can you speak more about the camera to purchase since my camera is too high of an angle and far away from me? Um, that's from Sue. You mean the, the actual type of camera? Yeah, because I have a large monitor um, and mm -hmm. I'm just the angle and, and where it sits on my, you know, my work desk. Yeah, so the, I mean, Logitech has a lot of really great ones. I like the companies that just do one thing or just do a couple of things, and this is one of those. Yeah, it's, uh, and I would move it, but I can't do that without destroying this shot. Or can I? Let's see. Let me show you. Can you guys see me? Did that change? So that's my, so that's my laptop camera. And that's my HD camera. You, they look the same? Oh, well, maybe because I cleaned my lens. 
Uh, a lot of times with FaceTime, it looks grainier, like the quality is just not as strong. It also is not HD and it doesn't follow as well. So this one, the HD one kind of follows me along. So it seemed like they yeah. were pretty close. They were pretty close. Okay, well, that's great. I thought so. And, yeah, I'm, I just, I don't look at things normally as a former reporter and we, I see the little things. Um, but yeah, it's... Um, Logitech is the name, C290. I think there's a C299, which is $100 more. I don't think you need that. Um, but yeah, it's, it, and it's manipulate. I mean, you can like move it and manipulate it and, and hook it on different things, which I like. My desk is totally MacGyvered. I don't know about you guys. <laughs> this, is, this is hilarious. I'm glad you can't see it. <laughs> okay, and then, yeah, Zoom Bouncer, yes, Marianne. That's that's maybe that's a new phrase. Hashtag Zoom Bouncer. Uh, more about the camera. Yep, I mentioned C290. Is that the Logitech? Yes, the equipment that was shown on the screen. Yes, does it? It does have a built-in microphone. Yes. Um. Yeah. So the brand. I don't know the brand of microphone, but yeah, I would just go with the Yeti. Um, I've been required. Okay. So, Eva, thank you for. Um, screening people. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, but it shows our reach, right? That was a lot of reach for, <laughs> I wonder where he was from. Okay, so this is from Marianne. I'm delivering the WordPress meetup presentation on June 1st, and I'm really glad I got to see your presentation. I will not be controlling the meeting, however, yeah. Throughout my presentation, I will stop at various points, and my co-manager of the meetup will ask participants who have raised their hands to ask their question would like to record the presentation and upload it to YouTube so it can be available as an informational video. Do you have suggestions about recording on Zoom and then uploading to YouTube? It works. Um, that's, that's a way to do it. You can also record right in PowerPoint. If you have a PowerPoint, I usually use Keynote. Um, but yeah, it just um, make sure that when you're recording it, and, and if you have an HD camera, then I would suggest that for YouTube. Because YouTube, yeah, the thing with YouTube, I always do um, Vimeo instead, just because it's private. YouTube controls your information, and um, that's kind of a drag. But also, like a lot more people will have access. A lot more people with HD, you know, and, and higher resolution screens. So yeah, I, it, does that answer your question? It's um, it works. Just record it on Zoom. Make sure on Zoom when you're recording it, you're um, doing it to your computer or your cloud, whichever one you trust. I do it to my computer. It just seems to work better. Um, oh, so uh, yeah, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I'm um, especially glad you told me to stand up because I always do and I, I'm giving pre presentation. It's like, oh, I need to do that here too. So um, yeah. yeah, I just haven't recorded it. I probably should practice a short Zoom, record it, upload yeah. it to YouTube and see, see how it works then. Yes, absolutely. I record my screen. So yes. Okay. Yeah. So if I, so right now you can see in the upper left hand corner that red light flashing and it's right. saying recording. Yeah. So that's just, that's a very good way to tell. And then at the end, it's just going to, you know, bundle it and send it to you or, you know, save it wherever you told it to save. So, okay. yeah, but definitely practice it. Um, and that'll tell you a lot. It'll tell you about the technology. It'll tell you about your um, energy. Uh, it'll tell you about your background, <laughs> all okay. those things. Be a first person. Great. Thank you. Yeah, you bet. Uh, any recommendations if you're giving a presentation where you're not at your desk or laptop? I teach online movement classes. Okay, so this is Eva. Do you, um, yes, so are you using your smartphone or can you use your smartphone? Hi. Hi. Uh, yes, I do have an iPhone. That's what I've been using. Mm -hmm. um, and I use an AirPod for the speaker. Okay. And the, and the microphone. So it's so far, it's kind of been a little bit of a goofy setup. I log in on my laptop, start the meeting. Mm -hmm. I mute uh, that camera. Mm -hmm. Then I go and log on my phone <laughs> from a different account. Uh huh. Turn off that video. Okay. Turn on that sound. So that yeah. way I can talk and hear people through the um, through the microphone. Yeah. 
And then if I have to stand up away from my computer, I turn off that camera and turn back on the phone camera. You got a lot going on. That's the only way I figured out how to do it. If you have other more streamlined ways, I'm really open to it. But like you said, that that awesome HD camera is on back order. And I haven't figured out. It was like a week ago. It was on back order. It Um, it still is. (laughs) Yeah. I actually just, yeah, I had ordered one over a month ago and they finally contacted me and said, oh, it's on back order. Oh no. Yeah. Um, yeah, business idea. Um, so <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, if you can get your AirPod to connect with your computer, I mean, it seems like, yeah, you know, I can't, I, it's, I think the computer's too old to work with the Bluetooth. We, we did try that. So, okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, that's something to consider because, I mean, it just seems like a lot of different steps are being taken, and that's, it it also seems like you're probably overthinking technology while you're trying to focus on your class, you know what I mean? I figured it out now. I mean, it was, yes, it was painful at first, but now we figured it out. Um, Yeah, Yeah. uh, okay, so unless I'm getting a new computer that will allow for the AirPod, that seems... Like I should just that's, keep that, that's my immediate one, but let me okay. think on that and and um, yeah, I'm happy to follow up with you. But okay. I mean, there are other things that um, that you can do with microphones. I put these some of these away. I'm still here. I have to hide everything from the dog, so excuse the noise. But this is one. Um, this is a camera, like a. Um, a lavalier that is wireless and you can connect that with your phone or you can I think you can connect it on some computers it didn't work well with mine but it's uh, Al- Alvoxcon I don't know if you can see it it's Alvoxcon T something TG2 okay I can send, I can send it to you though but I mean, there are things like that, you know, we used to do that in news, have a wireless microphone so that, which was funny because when you're doing a, a stand up and then the photographer's like hidden somewhere, you're just this weird person walking down the street. It's, it's very odd. You have to get over that when you're in news, but yeah, it helps because you can just go anywhere and move anywhere. And yeah, that sounds uh, better, like a possible solution. More media. Awesome. Thank yeah, you. you. bet. Okay. Um, I found using a small tripod to be pretty helpful in front of the monitor um, probably helps that you've got good lighting. And that was from Mark. Yeah, small tripod. My camera is on my tripod behind my laptop, which is on my daughter's chair. (laughs) And then I have the diva light over here. Again, MacGyver, right? I mean, just, yeah, a lot going on there. Is that, was that your question, Mark? Or was that what you were asking about? I see you there. I see you typing. He's uh, not listening. You tuned out. Okay. <laughs> no worries. Uh, let's see. Can you mention being able to hook up? Yes, the DLSR. Um, that's something that, it, you know, you just need to make sure it's compatible or you have a good uh, device that's going to connect with your Mac or your PC. I have a Mac. So when I get in front of a PC, I'm like, blah, blah, like I'm confused. It doesn't make sense to me. So just make sure that you have the right um, dongle or whatever it is to make sure that they're they're working some of the i have the newer mac and it drives me nuts because nothing fits in here <laughs> like this is i have to get you know a dongle that's not a very high quality and sometimes it falls out so yeah something you don't want to have happen okay more a comment audio off oh okay it was more con- gotcha we still see you mark though hello no he's smiling he's nodding okay good <laughs> Okay, is there, are there any other questions? Any examples people want to give? Garrett, you want to talk about St. John Bridge? You know, uh, I just want to say that uh, with the virtual background tool, something, and I'll pull this up, uh, it provides a unique uh, opportunity to uh, provide some branding. Uh, So one of my clients released a series of virtual backgrounds that are branded and 
uh, something we use during their meetings and things like that. Um, it creates a friendly atmosphere for them. I think they really enjoy it. Uh, and we have it for ourselves, for our own agency. Um, mm -hmm. You know, utilizing if you don't have uh, as an immaculate background as you do, Jenna, <laughs> uh, being able to utilize that virtual background for branding purposes uh, yeah. can be a great usage of it. So, um, and, you know, it doesn't require a big graphic designer. You can just uh, simply find your logo and, and a nice background and put that towards mm -hmm. it. But it really does make a difference in a lot of our meetings, particularly when we're meeting uh, people for the first time for our new business ventures. Uh, and then, of course, meeting with our own clients here. Um, it just, uh, yeah. It's just a great usage of the tool. I totally agree. I have a client that they're talking about kind of having like a little studio made. And when we first started talking about it, it was like, logo, you know, and you don't want to do that. I mean, you want to make it, you know, a little more subtle, a little, a little more classy. So, uh, but I do remember when I was at uh, Northwest Natural, we had, I don't know if you guys remember the tornado that touched down, but we, uh, yeah, so I was, I was the public information officer. So we planned for an earthquake, got a tornado. I was on the phone doing interviews and, you know, on camera stuff for like six hours. And um, we had a background set up that had some Northwest Natural stuff, but it wasn't like the big logo. And I think, you know, when you're doing TV interviews, they just don't really appreciate that. So it just looks too marketing-y, you know? Exactly. Yeah, to be subtle. But yeah, really good point. Eva, thank you for that. Yeah, Canva. I love Canva. Like, I have to get off Canva because that's like a, I mean, that's like, you know, the old Facebook for me. It's like, whoa. Oh. And so, yes, they do have some really cool virtual backgrounds. I think I also mentioned West Elm has some. Um, did you, Garrett, did you, was that your own photo? Your own image? Uh, yes. Yeah, it's one that my friend took. I wish I okay. was a good photographer as you, so. Yeah. Um, Just make sure they're high def and high quality and, and all that in practice before you throw something up there like that. But yeah. And it works well with whatever clothes you're wearing. Uh, for Sony cam folks, someone put a link in there. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So um, I'm wondering though if everybody is doing just mostly meetings or if they're actually doing presentations or sales, sales presentations or kind of what the what the mode is of everybody on the call. Uh, I can say that we've been doing seal, uh, sales presentations. I think that there was a kind of a lull right when the lockdowns first went into place, but uh, we found new opportunities through COVID to kind of reach people in new and different ways. Um, I think the biggest thing is kind of training yourself to pause. Uh, you know, I think you don't want to have that kind of collision where people are trying to talk over one another and then you have that, oh, no, you go. Oh, no, you go. And yeah. I think that it's kind of a thing that we've tried to work to train ourselves to do. Uh, and this is kind of been uh, across our company, which is just to, um, you know, not something you would do in normal because you can kind of experience physical features and things like that. Right. Allow yourself to really pause after making a statement, give time between statements, give time between uh, slides and, and really um, try to not be so into your PowerPoint, but really use the camera for its features and understand the physical cues, even though it might be delayed and, and try to introduce those pauses throughout just so you have a more cohesive and easygoing conversation without the kind of awkward stumbling and conflicts yes. with audio. Yeah, we don't like pausing in this country at all. So <laughs> it, it, we're constantly like jumping over each other with, with calls. And we do talk about that. You brought up a couple of good points about uh, our presentation training. People are so overwhelmed by noise and activity that when you are quiet, people really pay attention. Because they're like, what happened? Did the camera break? What's happening? What's going on? And it just gets people to focus really well and, and focus on what you're saying. Uh, and I like, like you were talking about people being on the call and trying to read their body language. Um, that's, that's an interesting one because half the time when, when you do a presentation in front of people, they look like, you know, they're either dead or they want to kill you. Like they don't get that you can actually see them. <laughs> you can see the expressions on their face. I know that intimidates a lot of people. And now with Zoom, like calls like this, it's even at a whole new level, you know? Uh, so it's interesting when you're preparing, when you're sending those prep calls, make sure that people are like on camera. Like a lot of times people will just, you know, call in and that's fine. I get it. But it's like, you want to be able to 
relate to them as much as possible. I have, it's funny, like my friends and I, we Zoom, we don't even call each other anymore. It's like, yeah, people want that interaction. <laughs> okay, I have to put these on. Uh, just meetings, meetings and presentations, yeah. When you're in a meeting, do you kind of look away or do you, you know, do you realize that you're on camera? Clearly some people don't and they take off their pants or whatever. But, <laughs> but is it something that, you know, are you, are you still kind of animated? Do you still have energy or do you just kind of leave that for the, for the presenter? Hi, can I um, okay. pipe in really quick? Uh, yeah. It's about that. Um, so it's mostly like an etiquette question. Um, I do find sometimes that it's hard, especially like with an hour long presentation, like to stare at the computer screen the entire time. You yeah. know, I have to get on my phone for work or something. Right. Is it better to just look down and do what you have to do? Or should you be switching off your camera? Like which is less rude? I think if you're going to walk away from the camera or do some of the other things we've seen on the uh, fails that are out there, then yeah, have that, have that ready to just kind of close off. I was on a, a call with a committee, I think it was yesterday, days are blending, I don't even know, but, uh, but I, I had like two calls from clients come in and so I just popped up my logo, walked away, did that and then, and then came back. Um, you know, you don't, you can look away, but I think that tuning in occasionally just to let people know that you're still active. Um, looking at you, Mark. I'm kidding. <laughs> just messing with him. <laughs> but just, just, you know, having, you know, that etiquette kind of thing to just, you know, nod or just be like, yeah, that makes sense. Or think about it without being through a camera. Like you don't get a break from being engaged just because you're on a call. So that was a really good question. I like your background, by the way. Very cool. Oh, thank you. This is not virtual. Yeah, no, that's, it looks, it looks quite real. <laughs> that's awesome. Okay. Sorry. No kids microphone without climbing under desk. Wait, Mark. Oh, sorry, kids. No microphone. <laughs> I totally get it. I'm just messing with you, <laughs> but it's good. Cause you're turning back to us and you're kind of getting engaged with us. So it's all good. What else? or other, some other things. So we do media training, we do, you know, virtual presentation training, we do all these different things. And so I have a million stories and a million tips. And sometimes I've been doing a lot of them. So if I have missed something or you need me to repeat it, then yeah, let me know. I, love Jen, I think you bring up, I brought up a good point earlier and something that I actually do because I have a little bit of broadcast experience in my back, but um, I have my camera over here, but I have my screens over here. And sometimes when you try to make that point, when you're trying to convey, especially to a client over a call, making direct eye contact with your camera lens and not uh, staying over with the screen. I see that a lot. And I think that, I think that throughout this presentation, you're consistently doing that. But I think that's a big call out for people is to not lose sight of where the lens is and making contact with that because that can better convey your message. Right. I love that it's lit up. Like that reminds me. But yeah, it's really, people do love eye contact. It's a, it's a chemical thing. It's a, um, something that just resonates. I mean, that's, you want to see people's eyes. If someone's looking away, or looking off here, it's like, you think they're not interested. You know, we actually, we've worked with a lot of clients and that's why I always say practice, 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 because on camera, because we have this one, I think, and I told you about this one, this one client who would just like look up, she was like, we were here, right? And she was like, here's what we're talking about today. We are over, we are, we are discussing pharmaceuticals and da, 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 like all the, she was everywhere. And she like literally avoided this area <laughs> where we were. We're like, is someone, is someone under the desk? Like, <laughs> What are you doing? <laughs> so uh, it was just, and she had no idea, no idea she was doing it. <laughs> And your, your point about pausing too, that's a really good one. Anna, we talked about this on our call. We did, I did a presentation presentation and talked with her about virtual calls or virtual presentations as well. But um, you do, you, um, let's see, what was I gonna say? Yeah, you, you want to make sure that, um, oh God, I had just had a total brain freeze there. What was I saying? What were we talking about? Pausing. 
Pausing. So that's pausing. Yes. So we do pause. See there, you guys are all paying attention. Um, so pausing to make sure that people can click that, um, click the audio on and off. Um, and then also pausing so that they can take notes or think about things. But you have to get comfortable with that silence. Don't let that upset you. Um, again, it's like people say, um, and ah, that's what I was trying. So, um, ah, or, uh, so all those things are ways for us to get to the next sentence while we're still on the first sentence. <laughs> so try and mitigate those. Snap your fingers at yourself, have your spouse do it, have your friend do it. Every time you say, um, or so, because that's something you can just get into that weird rhythm of this strange vernacular that we use. And you'll hear it when you record yourself, you can be like, why am I, what? There was one woman who said, right, at the end of every single sentence. We're talking about presenting, right? And we're talking about this thing, right? Right, right? And she had no idea she was going it. <laughs> so it can really irritate your, uh, <laughs> your audience. Okay, we have a few minutes left. How's everyone doing? Any other questions? I like the background, Garrett. That's a cool one. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if there are no other questions, I want to thank everyone for joining our virtual monthly speaker series event today with Jenna Cooper. And Jenna, thank you so much. This was incredibly helpful. And actually, the Q&A was fantastic just to go through all of these more specific questions that I know probably many of us all have together. So. Yep. And give me a ping. We do, again, we do virtual training. We do, we've been doing a lot of that lately. Um, it's just hello at C3 hyphen collective or, you know, get my information from Anna. Hi, I, I actually do have one more question. I typed in the chat. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yes. there you are. Has <laughs> anyone tried the PIVO bit that makes your phone track your movements? Um, I have not because I used the old one that was, not tracking what you know remember those ones that used to stick on, you'd stick it on top of your computer and they would like follow you kind of but not really and they'd get stuck so I, I if someone has I'd love to hear if there's a better technology than that I haven't tried it it just keeps getting advertised to me so I you know how some things are not what they think they, they say they are yeah people sometimes yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, that I would love to hear, like, if you check it out, but I mean, that would be really good for your business, obviously, be able to track you, but yeah, it's just, it just, it's weird, because the camera is like, it attaches itself to whatever is the most prominent or the best lit, and so if it's grabbing on to something behind you, then obviously, you're going to walk over to that thing and walk away, and it's still going to be on that thing. You know, I'm sure everybody loves your plants, but you probably don't want your plants you know, being the star of the show. <laughs> okay, is there, I think that's it. it looks like it. I am well, around. Thank you everyone for joining. And, you know, we'll let you get to your, your lunch today, right before noon. And we hope to see you next month. Stay tuned uh, on social and email for our, our next virtual monthly speaker series. And I believe it's on SEO. So there'll be more information forthcoming and we hope to have you guys register. Thank you so much, Jenna. Yeah, nice meeting everybody. Have fun Thanks, out Jenna. there.